and welcome to the sixth episode of Inside the American Independent Cinema. Today, we are going to talk about Kelly Reichert's feature debut film, released in 1994, River of Grass. River of Grass tells the unconventional story of two different characters that have nothing in common. From the beginning of the movie we are introduced by the voiceover uh, of the female character named Cozy, played by Lisa Donaldson. Uh, Cozy is a mother and a wife which is frustrated by her uh, very closed life and she wants to escape. So she decides one night to run uh, from her house and go to the nearest bar in the city. Here he, she meets uh, Lee, played by Larry Fassenden, which is an unemployed man who is not asking much about life. He is not questioning what is happening to him. Uh, they have a quick uh, chat and they discover that uh, they uh, share a deep attraction towards danger and definement of society rules. So they decide to go together and start a journey which will imply, of course, taking all risk that can appear down the road. You're not from around here, are you? Nope. I'm from Dade. Actually, it was from Dade. I would like to discuss Kelly Reichert's movie River of Grass in association with Counter Cinema. In film theory, Peter Wallen identifies avant-garde cinema with precursors like Sergei Eisenstein or Bertolt Brecht and going through counter cinema of Jean-Luc Godard. In this respect of Peter Wallen and his theories, I shall read an extract from his um, article, uh, The Two Avant-Gardes. In Godard's post-1968 films, we glimpse something of an alternative route between contentism and formalism a recognition that it is possible to work within the space opened up by the disjunction and dislocation of signifier and signified. Godard takes the idea of formal conflict and struggle and translates it into a concept of conflict not between the content of images like Eisenstein, but between different codes and between signifier and signified. He wants to simply not simply to represent an alternative world or alternative worldview, but to investigate the whole process of signification out of which a worldview or an ideology is constructed. In respect to Peter Wallen's theory of avant-garde cinema, actually avant-garde aesthetic cinema, I shall go back to River of Grass, our movie that we are discussing today, which is actually a, a combination of minimalism and realism 
given by the fact that uh, Kelly Reichardt's choices, directorial or autoristic choices, um, are actually very, very much in the spirit of the counter cinema. She prefers shooting on location and also she prefers to use available light, direct sound footage and also um, dialogue driven scenes. All of this can make of records a veritable avant-garde artist and also she is very very interested in the social environment in which she uh, draws her movie. share some of the basic characteristics of American independent cinema with directors like Hall Hartley or Todd Himes, but uh, she is departing from these directors because she inserts in her scripts some subtleties, some key point uh, events that may seem uh, uh, arbitrary in the beginning but which are actually very important not only to the development of the plot but especially to the development of the characters and when I refer to this kind of development I shall refer to one scene uh, which is happening in the beginning of the movie and may seem very very ac accidentally the father of Cozy is a police officer in the district and one day uh, he practically loses his gun accidentally. This gun is found by uh, Lee which uh, will become um, the partner of Cozy in the events that are happening after this part. So this gun practically becomes a uh, Lee gun because he chooses not to go back to the police or give it to the police. This is a very interesting twist of plot and we can say uh, that uh, River of Grass can be associated with uh, uh, road movies like Bonnie and Clyde or uh, Natural Born Killers or this type of, uh, of uh, road movies but this is not true because uh, Reichert, uh wants to uh, have a very uh, diffuse and calculated script so she practic 
basically uh, gives no clue about um, this gun um, in the end we see that uh, Lee is uh, practically murdered uh, by Cozy and we can say that this is a female negotiation or that has something to do with the female gaze uh, theory introduced by Laura Mulvey but this is not at all true this is a simple choice that uh, gives us the chance to interpret so this uh, this apparent uh, plot twist uh, of the losing of the gun uh, can transform and we shall see this by the end of the movie can transform Rikert's movie in an anti-road movie because nothing that happens uh, starting uh, from the fact that Lee wants to escape from Miami and has no money to pay over the frontier so he is practically told by the police officer to go back to the state and nothing that happens after this uh, can reduce the movie to a simple road movie. No. This is a movie with a psychological and very, very uh, profound uh, torment of Cozy. Uh, she has some traumas and some things from her past that will reveal by the end of the movie in her final action. Thank you very much for joining me today and looking forward to see you next time for sharing together the cinematic experience of American independent cinema.